Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical and this video is uh, nothing to do with anything electrical. It's about a piece of equipment I bought for the business which is uh, fairly handy and a, uh, a little hackette that I've got to make it even handier. Oh man, that's the stuff. Anyway, <coughs> it is this thing which is an EE Buzzard 2 in-car Wi-Fi. Now what happened was about two or three years ago uh, I thought, uh, well, I'm going to get um, get all high tech and leave the Firefax at home and uh, start uh, using an iPad for um, recording my daily activities and doing my certificates and my invoicing and all that sort of stuff on the move. Uh, if only I had a way of uh, getting that onto the network, though, without having to tether it to my phone. So I, uh, I bought this thing from uh, EE over on the Shires there. Uh, it's uh, a Buzzard 2. Uh, if you plug it into your uh, van cigarette lighter, uh, you have to press the power button to uh, power it up. It doesn't come on and off with the ignition, and uh, which was fine on the old van because the ignition was permanently on anyway, so uh, that was okay. Uh, it takes a little uh, micro SIM card, uh, which has uh, a data allocation on there, of course. And what this does is it provides a localized Wi-Fi network uh, with a, a shortish range. Um, and then that uh, connects to the, the data network on the SIM. So uh, as you're driving along, you've got permanent access to a Wi-Fi network and that Wi-Fi network, um, uh, that internet connection goes up and down depending on uh, how good the cell access is as you're driving along. So you may find, uh, for example, that it, uh, it slows down if you're out in the sticks a bit uh, and it's, uh, it's pretty good in the cities. Uh, but either way, it's, uh, it could be a bit patchy as you're moving along, but generally uh, it's there uh, and it's not too bad. Um, the whole, whole iPad thing lasted a very short amount of time before I lost patience with it and went back to my file effects. You can't be writing stuff down uh, unless you lose your file facts, of course, and I've had a few um, a few scares with that in the past. Uh, so no, the iPad got kicked into touch uh, and I was left with this thing that I, um, I was still paying monthly for. I think I had it on a two-year contract. Uh, and it, every now and again, of course, I take out my laptop. Uh, I can't beat a keyboard. Uh, I'm old school, so that's uh, that's fine by me. I like to use a keyboard. And every now and again, if I need to synchronise with my files or um, access Easy Cert on the move or uh, access the web uh, away from my phone, well, the laptop can talk to this thing, which is all well and good. Uh, but I got to thinking, well, it'd be more useful if I could connect this to my laptop um, away from the van. Obviously this requires a cigarette lighter plug to plug into, but sometimes I'm on a customer site, there's no Wi-Fi there because uh, perhaps they don't have the internet or we've turned the power off uh, to work on it of course, but I still need to get the laptop online or maybe I'm sitting in uh, in a cafe with a coffee or in the pub <laughs> uh, and I want to do um, access something on the laptop. Wouldn't it be great if, um, and there's no wireless network, if I could plug this in to my laptop in order to use it. So I went to EE about a year ago and I said, uh, look, can I take the SIM out of this and put it into a USB dongle that I can then plug into the laptop for the same sort of connectivity and they said well yeah but we don't sell those kind of things so I went to Carphone Warehouse next door and they also said well we don't sell those kind of things uh, and of course you can get them on Amazon um, but I was thinking well I've bought this bloody buzzard thing it'd be nice if I could use it and then I got to thinking well this uses a micro um, sim card which uh, operates either on 1.8 volts or 3 volts or something like that so I reckon that whatever voltage we stick in here which happens to be 12 volts normally uh, gets um, regulated down to probably about 3 volts anyway uh, and seeing as a USB port puts out 5 volts, I wondered whether it would work if it were just getting 5 volts instead of the full 12 volts. So I made myself a little adapter. This is uh, a USB cable. It used to be on a mouse or something, something that died anyway, and I chopped the end off it. And then I've got this um, cigarette lighter socket. Uh, which the USB cable connects to. Now with USB you've got four wires in there, you've got um, positive 5 volts, you've got ground um, which are usually red and black respectively and then you've got two data lines green and white. Now you don't need to worry about the data lines, they're not doing anything, all I want is the 5 volts. So the red wire I've connected to the, the pin on the cigarette uh, lighter socket and the black wire connects to the outer shield. Um, and this plugs in and it's all a bit unwieldy and rather ridiculous. But if I plug it into my laptop and then press the power button on here he says. 
Did I just break a wire by pulling it apart? No, that's all connected together. Well, this isn't going too well, is it? Oh, I'm not plugged in properly. Oh, there we go. It does work. <laughs> now, if I'd have rehearsed that, you'd know it would have worked first time, but uh, there we go. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the light is flashing red as it searches for a signal. And uh, the little uh, white envelope light comes on, which indicates that uh, it's got some kind of signal. And we've got a green light there, which means we've got a good signal. So we've got a uh, 4G signal, hopefully. Uh, and it's being powered there by the USB port of my laptop. Like I say, a little bit unwieldy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not the most uh, pretty of things dangling away there, but uh, you can just leave that to one side. And now if I click on the wireless icon on the laptop, it should come up. Um, Bloody hell, why does nothing work when I'm on camera? I should come up with EE in car 3G, but it's not showing it there. So I don't know why that is, because we've got the light on, so it should be working. Uh, but ordinarily, <laughs> it would be working. This is disastrous, isn't it? Oh. oh, there we go. It just wants to piss me off on camera. It says no internet at the moment, but... Uh, that's, uh, oh no, it has, it has come up now. And we are actually connected to it on the laptop at the moment. Connected, secured, super stuff. So uh, yeah, quite an interesting little thing. Um, all you've got to do to, to make it is to buy those component parts, the USB uh, plug, cable and socket, um, unless you cannibalize something um, like an old mouse to make it with, but you've still got to find somewhere to buy the socket with. Now, um, obviously, <laughs> it used to be the case you'd go somewhere like Maplin's for that sort of thing, but they've just uh, just gone bust, unfortunately, so um, you've probably got to go online to find a, a cigarette lighter socket now, or maybe Halfords do them, I don't know. Bit of a shame about Maplin's, I've been using them for years. Um, I used to do a lot of electronics stuff don't get time for it anymore, sadly. Uh, in fact, I've still got some of the old Maplin books from 1991, which are, are pretty old school, where they used to uh, sell you um, or tell you what projects you could make um, and sell you the components to make. And we've got all sorts of funky stuff on here. Um, everything from a, an explosive gas alarm to a, uh, uh, oh, a Z80 CPU module. I wonder what that did. Something with the Z80 processor. I bet that's interesting. Um, and we've got another one here. Same sort of thing from the same era. Uh, where you can make a light pen for your 8-bit microcomputer of the time. That's a fascinating read. I might have to have a look at this later on, you know, a bit of bedtime reading. Or a computer drum. Any idea what a computer drum is? It's an electronic drum kit for your home computer, it says. I wonder what... Uh, and it's even got the basic there that you could program it with. The good old days, eh? Uh, sadly, uh, no longer, because Maplin aren't around anymore. The old Maplin logo there. Um, personally, I think they lost the plot a bit where they try to become the next Tandy or Woolworths and sell cheap disco lights and amplifiers instead of catering to the electronics enthusiasts of old. I remember the old uh, Bishop Street store in Coventry, which used to look like Argos, black and white catalogues everywhere, full of electronic components and a bunch of nerds behind the counter uh, with stacks of drawers behind them containing resistors, capacitors, ICs and the like. Nowadays you go into Maplin, or you did, uh, and it's all disco lights and drones and I think, you know, if you want your electronic components, there's a, a bag of them uh, on there, but uh, they're probably not very competitively priced. So a bit of a shame. I think they sort of lost their core market a bit there, but uh, what the hell, I'm going off talking about something completely different now. Just to say, yeah, yeah, this was a, a quick video, just to say that the um, the EE Buzzard thing does run off USB. So if you've got one of these things and you want a bit of extra capability from it, you could knock up some monstrosity such as this in order to connect it directly to a computer. Um, for use away from the car, so it doesn't have to just be an in-car thing. Right, that's it for me. It's time for me to go and get drunk. Good night.